Hi everybody, I'm Catherine and today we'll be talking all about my experience making an 18th century inspired swim dress, incorporating the structure, patterning and boning of 18th century bodices with modern stretch swim fabrics. Are these two things even compatible? That's what we're going to find out in this project. Let's go. This is a project I've been mulling over in my mind for probably three years now. It all started because I'm not a huge fan of modern swimsuits in the sense that I don't feel comfortable exposing as much of my body as most modern swimsuits are designed to do. And I was interested in the option of a swim dress of some sort. But the only problem is there are barely any of these on the market and none of them appealed to me. They're all kind of just plain and boring. Also, they don't really have much built-in bust support, which is something that's important to me. So I was mulling over this idea of how could I incorporate the boning and the structure and the bodice support of corsetry with a swim dress. And I wanted a swim dress that would have sleeves of some sort and some leggings underneath. I was mulling over the idea of even having built-in leggings, but as you'll see, I decided not to go that route. The bodice was the main thing I needed to figure out. I needed to have the boning incorporated into the bodice in a way that would camouflage the boning. No open boning channels, nothing of that sort like you'd see in a corset. It needed to be completely hidden inside the dress. And I also was concerned about being able to breastfeed in this corset, which is something we'll go into later whether or not I was able to succeed with that. But I do have a seven month old son and he's nursing. So that was another thing I needed to figure out in terms of having a front Front opening and closure method and how would I even get this swim dress on? Would I have a zipper? Would I have lacing? What would I do? That's what we're going to get into with this project. I bought my materials from an online fabric store called Black Rabbit and I bought a sort of bright aqua green color of swim material and a dark green color of the same exact type of swim material, both from this website. I also ordered an invisible zipper, which I didn't end up using and more on that later. And I got some hook and eye tape from my favorite corset supplies website, Farthing Ales. And I also had some eyelets in stock already and some lacing cord. And lastly, I also ordered a good quantity of swimsuit lining from the same Black Rabbit fabric store. And the reason for this was twofold. Of course, I did want lining material for my swim dress, and we'll get into how exactly I incorporated that with the boning in a minute. But I also wanted to have enough lining so that I could create a mock-up of my pattern with the swimsuit lining, because of course, lining is less expensive than real swimsuit material. And I knew I would need a mock-up of some sort for a design this um, ambitious and it's a stretch pattern so you want to do a mock-up with stretch fabric of course and one more very important material that I already had on hand was some woven white cotton tape fabric tape so I use both a narrow width as well as a one inch width and we are going to get into how I use those and how they came in so handy for me later in this project I decided that I would have this swim dress in three separate components. There would be the 18th century inspired bodice, there would be an 18th century inspired skirt, and there would be a separate pair of short leggings, which I decided I would go ahead and purchase to simplify this project. My original plan with the bodice was to have a zipper in the front, no closure at the back, so just get it on with the zipper. And the reason I opted to have the zipper in the front rather than the back is just to make the breastfeeding access work better. These did not stay the same and we're gonna get into that later. So in terms of creating the pattern, I had two options available to me, either drafting a pattern or draping a pattern. I recently did create my DIY custom dress form, which you can see behind me, and I did end up deciding to drape the pattern. And the main reason for that is that while I do have some experience draping my own patterns, I'm not comfortable draping stretch patterns. I've never done it before. It's a little more complicated because you have to take into account the exact stretch percentage of whatever fabric you're working with. I decided to drape my pattern. And the way I did that was by putting a pair of 18th century stays on the dress form 
and then draping my stretch swimsuit lining fabric over top of that to create both a front bodice pattern and a back bodice pattern. I will link in the description a very helpful video I found here on YouTube all about how to drape a knit pattern. And if you are planning on trying something like this, you will definitely want to check that out. So of course I started off draping the pattern the same way you normally would. This is not a draping video, so I won't get into many more details. It was a very quick and rewarding process. Now, if you want to make something similar to this, I have two additional ideas for how you could create a pattern using store-bought patterns and altering them. My first idea is to either find from your stash or buy a pattern for a tight-fitting knit or stretch t-shirt. And then of course you would need to alter this pattern to have the style lines that you want. So probably a wider neckline, maybe some longer sleeves, and of course the V-shaped waist that is exactly reminiscent of the 18th century. And my second idea is either finding from your pattern stash or buying a pattern for a one-piece swimsuit. And then you would take that pattern and alter it again to have the style lines that you want. So probably a different neckline, adding some sleeves of some sort and adding the v-shaped waistline of the 18th century bodice so now let's get into how i made the mock-up for this pattern i went straight from my draped pattern that i created on the dress form traced that off onto some pattern paper and i just trued everything up so i straightened up the lines and the corners and made everything match with the side seams and all that and i added my seam allowance and then i cut out these pieces from the swimsuit lining i cut out two layers for the bodice so that i could sandwich the boning in between the two layers i marked my bone channels mostly by eye and I at first tried it an ambitious sort of 18th century stays laying layout of the boning where you have crisscross boning and then I started to stitch my boning channels at first I wanted to experiment with seeing if I could use my old singer and a straight stitch stretching the fabric as I sewed because I heard that you can sew swimwear with this method but it didn't work for me the fabric ended up quite puckered up so I decided to pull out my Janome machine, which I've used since I was a child, and my good old fashioned walking foot, which is very helpful for sewing with stretch fabric. And I used a stretch stitch, and I sewed all my boning channels in this way, inserted my boning, and stitched the mock-up together. The mock-up fit pretty well, except that it was a bit too loose in the sense that it didn't have enough bust support. And so I decided in the mock-up phase to take out some excess from the side waist area and just tighten it up that way and hopefully provide more bust support in this way. This would turn out to be not the greatest idea as you'll see later. Another thing that I decided in the mock-up phase which turned out to be a very good idea was to incorporate back lacing as well as a front closure because with the bodice being as tight as it was it would have been much too hard to just put it straight on only with a front closure like a zipper or even hook and eyes. So I decided to also have some back lacing that I could loosen up and tighten as needed. So at this point I decided to have hook and eye closure at the front using my hook and eye tape from Farthing Nails instead of a zipper, hoping to make the doing up process a little easier with such a tight bodice. Again, this turned out to be a bad idea, but more on that later. And then I also decided to simplify the boning layout by only having vertical boning in the bodice and eliminating the horizontal boning, which just seemed unnecessary. So now it was time to cut out my final swim dress pieces. At this point, I decided that I would have the bodice made out of the dark material and the skirt made out of the light material. The main reason for this was that the dark material camouflages any awkward ridges from the boning underneath much better than the light material would. So I traced off my pattern pieces and cut them out and I cut out enough to have two layers of the dark green fabric for the whole bodice and two layers of the lining material for the whole bodice. And I forgot to mention about the sleeve. So I created my sleeve from a basic sleeve block that I have and I just eliminated some excess in order to make it fit with the stretch fabric. 
and that's what I went ahead and cut out out of my dark green fabric for this. Now for the skirt, an 18th century skirt is very simple because it's just comprised of two very wide rectangles and I knew I wanted this skirt to be no longer than knee length. So I was able to just take my entire swath of light greenish swim fabric and split it into two large rectangles to have lots and lots of nice pleating. So now let's get into the construction of this swim dress. First, I'm going to talk about how I constructed the boned lining of the bodice. So the first step was taking the lining material, now that the pieces were all cut out, and basting them together around the borders of each piece, because again, there are two layers that make up the lining. After I did that, I marked on my boning channels using my Pattern Master ruler, and then I stitched these, again using a stretch stitch on my Janome machine with the walking foot. Before I added the boning into the boning channels, I wanted to go ahead and add the sleeves onto the bodice because sewing sleeves is always tricky and it's even more tricky if there's already boning in a bodice because it's that much more difficult to maneuver. So I went ahead and I sewed my basic bodice seams like the side seams and the shoulder seams and then I added my sleeves onto each side. And again, I was working with this bodice in two separate pieces because I was planning on having both a front closure as well as a back closure. And I should also mention that I didn't add boning channels to the center back area because I planned on doing that once the bodice was completely incorporated with the dark green outer material. After my sleeves were added to the lining, I went ahead and I added my boning. Something I learned during the mock-up phase was that it was important to cut my boning after it had already been inserted into the boning channel. The reason for this is that the process of inserting it in stretches the fabric out a bit and you end up needing a longer strip of boning than it originally may have appeared. So I cut the end of my boning, filed it to make it a smooth curved edge, and then inserted it into the channel before cutting the other end and filing that end smooth. I repeated this for all the boning channels. So now it was time to incorporate the dark green layers of this swim dress into the lining layers. So first off, I want to mention that I had two options for doing this. I did have two layers of dark green bodice material cut out, and I could have just had both of those dark green layers sitting on top of the bone lining for better camouflaging of the boning underneath. But instead I opted to have one dark green layer on the outside of the swim dress and another dark green layer on the inside of the swim dress. I'm glad I chose this option because some of my boning channel stitching on the lining turned out to be kind of messy with, you know, messed up threads and stuff like that. So I'm glad it's all hidden inside the bodice. The way I did this was I stitched both dark green bodices together separately. And one of these dark green bodices I sewed on my dark green sleeves onto. And the other dark green bodice I stitched my sleeves that were cut out of the lining material, so the nude colored sleeves. Now that these were all sewn, I just, I, it was time to incorporate them all together. And the way I did this was by sewing them together along the center front and center back seams with right sides together and then turning them right side out so those raw edges were all hidden inside. After doing this, I was able to understitch that seam allowance to the lining layers, just like you would do in sewing a normal bodice. And now it was time to finish up the center front and center back edges. This included adding my hook and eye tape to the center front and adding my boning channels and eyelets to the center back. So I, I marked on my boning channels, I, st I stitched them in with dark green thread because they were completely visible from the outside of the dress. And of course I left adequate space in between those two boning layers those two boning channels to have my eyelets for the center back. And then I went ahead and I marked my eyelets with chalk and I added them using the 
hammering method and a little anvil. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to get any footage of this. It was just a challenging thing to be able to film. But there, my eyelets were all added and I laced up my swim dress using the crisscross method. Now I had been planning on having some sort of under placket for the hook and eye tape so that if there was any gaping in the center front, there would still be a layer of material underneath that so my skin wouldn't show through. But I realized that a placket is only possible if you're using individual sew-on hook and eyes rather than an actual strip of hook and eye tape. So I had to ditch my idea for a front placket and this whole hook and eye situation would come back to bite me later, so stay tuned for that. So now it was time to add hand stitching finishing to this swim bodice. This involved hand stitching in the gutters of the seams to hold the three layers all together nicely along the side seam as well as the shoulder seam and even around the sleeves a little bit. So at this point, it was late at night. I was tired, but I was really excited to try on my swim dress. And note to self, it is never a good idea to try something on for the very first time late at night because it ended up, it ended up having some very serious fit issues and I had a hard time falling asleep that night. I was just super stressed out thinking about how am I gonna fix this swim dress and honestly feeling like this project was a complete failure. What was I thinking? This was a horrid idea. There's no way you can combine stretch swim fabric with 18th century, there's just no way. So the fit issues were mainly that it turns out I had taken out way too much at the waist area during the mock-up phase. And the way that this happened was that in the mock-up stage, I was only dealing with two layers of the swimsuit lining material, which is much thinner than the real swimsuit material. And now with the finished swim dress, there was not only those two layers of lining, but there was also two layers of the green material. So that's four layers all together. And it became much tighter fitting due to the extra layers of fabric. And so I really could have just left the bodice exactly as it was and it would have fit just fine. But since I had taken out that excess at the waist, it was much too tight at the waist. And you can see by looking at the center back lacing area, how it splays out more at the very bottom at the waist level. And that's because the waist was just simply too tight. And another major problem was that the hook and eye opening at center front gaped majorly. I'm assuming this is because I was working with a tight fitting stretch bodice as opposed to a woven bodice, which won't pull and stretch as much. So after a good night's sleep, I decided that I would try to salvage this project. So I decided to open up the lower side seams of the bodice and add two triangular godets of fabric at the waist level to open up that waist a bit more. And this also increased the comfort of the swim bodice because that way I didn't have boning poking directly into my waistline. It was just a triangular area of just fabric with no boning in it. And I also decided I would have to remove my hook and eye tape and simply close the center front seam and cover it with some sort of white fabric tape. So that's what I did. And miracle of miracles, after trying it on this time, it ended up being much better fitting and I was much happier. Now the last fix that I did was I decided to add a modesty panel at the center back lacing area to prevent any skin from showing through at the lacing gap. And finally, I bound the edges of my swim dress bodice with one inch wide woven white fabric tape to tie it all together. So now it was time to create the 18th century inspired skirt portion of the swim dress. So remember we had those large rectangles of the light greenish blue fabric. So it was time to pleat those up in the 18th century way. And if you want directions, detailed directions on how to do this, I do have a video on how to make an 18th century pleated skirt. So definitely check that out. I'll link it above or below or something. So I pleated that up and I stitched those pleats down and my machine was kind of having a lot of trouble at this point. So it turned out very messy. And with the stretch material, it's really quite slippery as well. So it's hard to get it to stay put as you're sewing it through, even if with basting it first. I used that same one inch um, cotton tape 
that I'd bound the edges of my bodice with, and I used that as both the waistband and the waist ties for the 18th century skirt. And again, go to my 18th century skirt tutorial for more information on how this works. But I stitched it on, leaving those long ties at the side, and I stitched partway up the side seams of the skirt because there's meant to be a little gap at the top so you can tie it on and overlap them a little bit. And after hemming it, my skirt was finished and the swim dress was complete. So the day after finishing the swim dress, our family took a trip to a lovely nearby beach and I wore my swim dress for the first time. And other than one issue, which I'll mention in a moment, I really loved this swim dress. It was super comfortable. I felt super chic in it. And the best part about it was that I went swimming in a super cold lake and this swim dress was like a wetsuit. It kept me so warm with my leggings underneath that I wore. And it was just, it was like a comforting hug being in the water with this, you know, boned swim dress bodice on. And it was nice and warm and it was really wonderful. The one issue I'd like to mention is that some of the boning in the bodice I brought it up too high and much too close to the armholes. And so I had a couple of the pieces of boning kind of poking in my armpits in an uncomfortable way. And so that night I came home and I had to perform surgery on my swim dress and open up the bodice a little bit and cut some of that boning shorter and then sew it back in place. And I would like to mention my um, swim leggings that I wore underneath. I found these from Lululemon. It just saved a lot of the work and having to try to sew my own leggings to just buy a pair of leggings. And they're probably much better than anything I could have made anyways. They really add a lot to the swim dress. It wouldn't work without some sort of shorts or leggings underneath. And I really recommend them. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave your comments and questions below. And if you'd like even more detailed information with written information and photos, then check out the blog post, which will be linked in the description. I also have an email list, which you may want to subscribe to on my blog. I send out a weekly newsletter with videos and what I'm working on. Consider supporting me on Patreon. I just got a Patreon account and anyone who supports me for $5 a month on Patreon will receive my newest videos three days before anyone else. And you'll also receive updated information on what videos are coming out next, what I'm working on at any given moment. And most of all, I would really appreciate your support. And of course, guys, subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of content, historically inspired sewing. Hit the alarm bell so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.